an all-new Dr. Phil. She published a book. You said this is about your family. It's based on us, yes. But her family's calling her out. It's just a complete book of lies. You are absolutely out of your mind. I think my brother has some mental illness going on right now. What has she written? Your mother fed dead cat meat to your father. That has them so upset. Satanic rituals were going on. You're a liar. You're such a freaking liar. Now that my sister's gone public with the story, I get panic attacks. People look at me like I'm a freak or something. I choose to just pretend my sister doesn't exist. She does exist. Not in my world. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by, Dr. Phil. I try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. In five, four. I am not giving up on you. was recently thumbing through a real eyebrow raiser of a book the other day that had many astoundingly bizarre and tragic stories inside its pages. For example, quote, mother grabbed the knife and began cutting around the kitten's heads. She was laughing as she tore the skin off the kitten's bodies. We had kittens for dinner that night, and mother acted like it was fried chicken. Now, the author of this book, Jory, says this book is actually based on true events from her childhood. Even more bizarre is that Jory says her dead mother came to her in a vision from heaven, sat down with her on her bed, and told her to write this book. She says it's a twisted tale of a psychotically abusive mother and her three children. But in the beginning of the book, Jory added a disclaimer that says, based on a true story, but I fictionalized characters and events to protect the innocent. Now, although Jory added this disclaimer, she alleges that at least 75% of what she wrote in this novel is true. Now, the problem is her brother says the entire thing is a book of lies. Take a look. My book is primarily about my sister Dottie and I and what happened in our childhood. Most of the book is factual. The character in the book, Tasha, is actually my sister Dottie. The character Jen in the book is really me. My sister Dottie and I both suffered emotional and sexual abuse. We were abused by our mother. My mother did really horrible things growing up. She would take cats and kittens and drown them in our bathtub. She would make me hold the kittens underwater until they drowned. My mother did this because she was mentally ill. It made me feel sick. My mother was very sexually abusive. Growing up, my mom would call me into the bathroom. She would want me to wash her back. She would play with herself sexually. I was very confused and mortified. When I was around 12 years old, my mother introduced me to a man in his mid-20s. My mother insisted that I should have sex with this man. I had sex with this guy five days a week for two years. My mission is to bring awareness. I don't want people to go through what I have as a child. My family thinks that I wrote the book to be vindictive and cruel to my mother. In my eyes, Jory is absolutely insane. She's crazy. She's delusional. She cannot differentiate the difference between fantasy and reality. My brother Grant is not in the book at all. It has nothing to do with Grant. With all the abuse and neglect I had growing up, I feel grateful for making it out alive. Well, we'll talk to Grant in a little bit, but first, I want to go through Jory's incredible childhood tale. Um, and let me, let me be sure, because I'm a little confused. You say it's a novel and you change the names, but then you say, actually, it's me and it's my sister and it's my mother. This is a true story, so which is it? Is this true? A lot of it is true. I really could have no recollection of my childhood. I don't have any good childhood memories. 
You say you have no recollections of your childhood? No. Well, it really came back to me while I was writing. I'm trying to find out what we're talking about here. Are we talking about things that happened or things that, that, that you say you made up? Because you say you made up some of this for mm -hmm. sensationalism. I just typed what came out. I didn't have any pre-planning or any idea if it was going to be fiction or nonfiction. I was severely depressed and suicidal and just started writing this book. Okay, well, here are some of the key allegations that you made, that you had to drown kittens, that your mother mixed dead cat meat with rice and fed them to your father, that you were forced to watch her pleasure herself, that your sister was raped and tortured at one point and your mother didn't listen to her, didn't believe her, that you were gang raped in, in your own home, that your mother forced you kids to eat cat food? Yes. And that your, she forced your sister to get breast implants at age 14? That's what my sister told me. Satanic Remember. rituals were going on. She killed your neighbor with pills? Yes. Murdered him? Yes, her. This goes on and on, but yes. I mean, this was this is horrible happenings, right? Yes. And these are things that you know actually happened. Yes. I'm trying to determine if you're a compassionate advocate for those that have been abused or if you're an exploitive exhibitionist that has put your family through a lot of exposure and hurt because you are vindictive or an exhibitionist. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not being judgmental at all. No. I'm, trying to f I'm, I'm trying to find out. And you, you seem to be telling me three or four different stories in the last 15 minutes. Wow, really? Um, I don't think there's a person in this audience who would spend their life savings to write a book, gain 30 pounds, and go in financial debt, and then destroy their family and lose all their friends and loved ones to do something like this. And you're saying that's what you did? I did. That you spent all your life savings, gained 30 pounds, and destroyed your family to do this? Because I'm alive. And you did this to save your life? I did this to save my life. Okay. And, and because your mother came to you and told you to do yes. it? Yes. How do you feel about the fact that your brother says, it's absolute lie? That's my brother. In fairness to him, Mm -hmm. He wasn't there for a lot of this, no, right? No, he was he, not. He was, he's younger. He has a different father. He's seven or eight years younger. But how could he know? He wasn't even there. No, he wasn't even there. So, well, Jory's brother Grant is here today. They have barely spoken to each other in five years. He says his sister Jory is a liar. She completely fabricated everything in this book. We're going to get his point of view when we come back. When I think about what my sister did, I'm angry. In my eyes, I feel like the book is a total book of lies. It makes me feel disgusted. I feel like it's a big slap in the face. When I was nine, my mother made us tuna sandwiches, which were actually made out of cat food. I ate most of mine, but my sister Dottie spit hers out when she saw the open cans of cat food on the counter. Things like that were kind of normal, so I really didn't think much of it. Another time, my mother killed a cat by drowning it. My mother cut up the cat, and she took off the meat, and she fried it and made a meal for my father with peas and carrots and rice and told him his dinner was served when he got home. Jory wrote a novel of sorts, although she says that it is based on a disturbing series of true life events that she suffered at the hands of her mother. Uh, Jory's brother Grant says her novel is nothing but a book of lies. In my eyes, I feel like the book is a total book of lies. When I think about what my sister did, I'm angry. 
It bothers me that she wrote a book based on our family without my permission. My mom was a good mom. She did the best she could with what she had to work with. Jory saying that my mom encouraged her to go out with older men is definitely a complete lie. I would say the only truth about the book was there was three siblings and a mom, and there was mental illness in the family. The book is a joke. It's not even close to reality. I read her talking about being forced to sacrifice animals and being prostituted out and having forced abortions and all these just horrible, horrific things. I don't remember Jory ever being abused. I remember Jory being a spoiled brat. My sister Jory is seven years older than me. When Jory was growing up and a teenager, she was completely out of control. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I think that she's been fabricating stories about my mom for years to make excuses for her own behavior. It makes me feel disgusted. I feel like it's a big slap in the face. Well, Grant says his sister is also systematically trying to ruin his life because he will not allow her to use his name or likeness to market her self-published book. I think Jory has done everything in her power to ruin my life. I worked at a bank. Jory had contacted me to ask if she was still listed on her father's trust account. I looked to see if her name was listed on it. I informed her that it wasn't. I did exactly what she asked me to do. I had never asked Grant to go into my accounts. She went into her local branch where she lives and said, my brother's been accessing my account without my permission. I demand that he be fired or I'm going to sue this bank. That same day, I was fired from my job. Grant lost his job. He went berserk. I was living I wanted to kill her. I left her three or four messages. I called her about every name possible. He just started a war. You can't finish, bitch. You want some piece of I was terrified for my life. Jory got a restraining order on me. I went to court. Well, the judge says, well, this lasts for five years. I said, can we make it 100 years? Because I don't plan on going near her again. And I had asked Jory not to use my name in anything to do with her book or any of her crazy tales. She refused to. So I said, OK, you know what? I'm gonna let the world know the truth then. I wrote a review about her book, said the book's full of lies, and I signed it, Jory's brother. She immediately went onto my Facebook page and posted a comment saying, my brother beats his kids and molests his children. Jory also called Child Protective Services on me. In my eyes, she is dead to me. Jory has made it her absolute mission to try to destroy my life. Okay, Grant, I'm glad you're here. Um, now, we actually uh, were going to do this show like a month or two ago. Right. Uh, at the last minute, you decided you didn't want to do it. Right. Why did you decide that y you actually did want to do it? I was in the middle of a custody case, and uh, under the advice of my attorney, I was, I was told not to do the show. Right. And I started receiving threatening text messages from Jory exactly what she planned to do if I didn't do the show. And she I decided- She threatened you if you didn't do the show. Yeah, she said that she was gonna make my life a living hell if I didn't do the show. And I say those text true? messages. Is that true? No, I'd like to see them. Well, okay. Uh, here's a text message from you um, at 10.50 a.m. to him. Um, apparently, you removed a restraining order yeah. so you could be at the show. You said, you don't show up, this restraining order will go back to a fact, and I will make your life a living hell because you're a liar. Everybody's going to know that because the truth always wins, and you're just proving, and I will make your life a living hell. Uh, I, can, I can explain that. Well, it does sound it like you're kind of I know it's vindictive and it's cruel. That you're going to make his life a living hell if he yeah. doesn't show up. And the reason I wrote that is because he actually wrote that to me in the opposite matter. So I responded with his exact words just to let him feel like, how does it feel? How do you like it? But it is true. He did promise in court that he would go to the Dr. Phil show so we could resolve our family issues. Well, I understand, he, but you did kind of threaten yeah, him. Yeah, I probably did. Probably? <laughs> well... It just, he just said, I've got it in writing. Well, it's so been I... a month since then, and I haven't made his life a living hell. I haven't even contacted him. Uh, let's first talk about what we can agree on. Did your mother suffer from mental illness? Absolutely. So she clearly had problems, right? Yes. And can we agree that they were pretty severe at times? Yes. And you would agree that she, she improved across time, right? Absolutely. And in later years, she got better. Much better. But there were some really dark times when she was at a, a really bad phase of her life. And 
and, and I can tell you chronologically, some of those times would have been at an age when you were not yet around or were too young to be cognizant of what was going on, just in terms of when these, some of these illnesses tend to peak and potentiate. That's an 11 year gap in there that a lot of things could have been going on that you might not recall. Sure. Did you threaten her life? I probably told her I was gonna kill her after she got me fired. Yeah, and I meant it. I wanted to hit you right in the face with a shovel. I think that my brother has some mental illness going on right now. You say in your book review, uh, you write this and yep. you say... And I stand behind every word I wrote. Right. You, you say the author of this book describes herself as a victim of abuse. The only thing she's a uh, victim of is her own severe mental illness. I mean, that's what you wrote yep. uh, when you were there. Yep. I know this firsthand because she is my sister. Of all of us kids, Joy was absolutely never neglected or abused, as she claims, but in fact was obviously favored by our mother and in all reality was a spoiled, rotten brat. Yep. When Joy was a teenager, she was heavily into drugs, mainly meth and LSD. Uh, rather than own up to her own bad decisions, she has grown up to falsely blame others for her difficulties in life. People deserve the truth about this author rather than listen to her twisted tale of lies. Signed, Jory's brother. Yep. So that's your opinion. Yep. This is America. Yep. <laughs> You're entitled to your opinion. You wrote it down. You posted it as a review. That's your opinion. But the truth is you may not know how she was treated for the 11 years that you weren't present. I know it happened from the time on, and I'll tell you what, half the things that she said in the book, I, I do remember those times. Okay, I was okay there that's fair, but, but you, do, you, you do acknowledge there was an 11-year gap. I already acknowledged it, Dr. Okay, Cole. did you do meth and LSD? I don't even know what meth and LSD had to do them. Oh, God. So that's Looks no, like you, you didn't no. do meth or LSD? No. Do we have any polygraph tests or anything? How, how do you know that she... <laughs> How do you know that she did? Because I remember her talking about it. She, Jory, when mm. I was younger, Jory, um, you know, she uh, attempted to educate me about drugs from her experiences. <laughs> and she was honest with me about what she had done. Yeah. And, you know, she, she's told me about her experiences. Did you, did you tell him that? I think that my brother has some mental illness going on right now. Yeah. And this got under your skin. This, when she wrote this book and all this really got under your skin. Yeah, it, you know, um, did you threaten it, her life? I probably told her I was going to kill her after she got me fired. Yeah, and I meant it. I wanted to hit you right in the face with a shovel. You said some things that were... I was livid. I, you pretty know hostile. Yeah. Uh, and then you posted this. I'm getting the restraining order today. My brother has threatened my life. He's mad I wrote the book and has been trying to make me pay any way he can. I'm writing this so if anything happens to me, there are police reports and voice messages with threats to use as evidence. I'm not afraid. I accept that this may happen. You sent a pretty hostile voicemail. Several of them. Well, let's listen to one of them. Yeah, you just started the war. You can't finish this. But I tell you what, you f***ed up. When it starts happening to you and you're going, why? I'm behind all of it. You would die. You know you want a piece of There's no anger issues there, though. Dr. Phil, if your career was sabotaged and someone came after your children, wouldn't you be a little angry? Those voice messages were before he got fired. You're lying. No. <clears throat> Bring out the polygraphs. You're a liar. Call your boss. You're a liar. My <sighs> boss didn't want to fire me. He said, you know what? This is absolutely ridiculous, and I'm going to stick my neck out to try to save your job because your, your sister's out of her mind. Oh. It went above her because she was saying, I'm going to sue the bank and so oh, yeah. forth, and he said, you know what? 
I, I have to let you go. I'm really sorry about what your sister did. Yeah. I have like $10 in my account. So I stormed into this bank and I said, my brother wrote this review on my book and I'd like him fired or I'm suing the bank. No, you said I accessed your account without sense? your information and I demand that he's fired. I did exactly what you asked. Really? Me. I ran into the bank. I did exactly what you asked of me and I was, that was my mistake. I, I didn't even know I had I an account known better with my than father. Ever trust you why would for I, a second. Why would I call you and have you check the account I have with my father when I didn't even know you, there was an account with my father we at had your bank? Whatever. You're such a Freaking liar, Jory. You are you, absolutely out of your the mind. The reason I called you at your bank was because you wanted to sell your house, and I called you to let you know how much your house was worth, and I said I, I never talked sell about selling my free. house, and if I did, I definitely wouldn't have you being the realtor. That's yes, you would, because I said I would do it for free. No, I would rather brother. pay someone than deal with you. Yeah, that's not true. Yeah, you're a liar. Well, there's another sister. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jory's sister, Dottie, is also here. We're going to find out why she says Jory is one of the most vindictive people she has ever met in her entire life. And her picture is on the cover of this book. She cooperated in writing it. So what's her beef? We'll hear what she has to say after the break. If someone else is gonna talk about my life, it should be me. My sister has gone off the deep end. Grant is a rageaholic. Every time I'm around Grant, it's like walking on eggshells. Jory's also fabricated lies about me. She says that I'm a violent drunk that likes to beat women. She says that I have put my kids in danger with the way I drive. What scares me the most about Grant is that he is so violent and so angry and so vindictive that he's actually going to kill somebody, if not himself. Jory wrote a twisted tale of unthinkable abuse in a self-published novel. Her brother Grant says Jory went around telling everyone, including local media, that the accounts in this book really happened. Grant unequivocally says it's a book of lies. We've agreed he wasn't there for all of this period of time, but he feels like it's a book of lies. Jory and Grant's other sibling, Dottie, says Jory's book has caused nothing but unnecessary drama. Take a look. When my sister first started writing the book, I was very supportive. I was really proud of her because I figured that writing's a good way to vent, and I helped her as much as I could. When my sister went on the radio, she pretty much told everybody that the book that she wrote that was supposed to be fiction was actually, in fact, my brother and my story. My sister, yes, this is her story. When I heard the radio interview, I thought I was gonna die. I was like, you've got to be freaking kidding me. I have no words to say how I felt. I don't want my boyfriend knowing I was molested. I don't want my kids knowing that. I was beyond devastated. I feel like if someone else is gonna talk about my life, it should be me. Please don't talk about me to the public. It's not okay with me. My sister has gone off the deep end. Now that my sister has gone public with the story, I get panic attacks. I feel like my life is in major chaos and I feel directionless and making poor choices. I can't sleep at night. I want to have my life back. Dottie, th welcome. Thank you. How do you feel about this book being written? I feel really actually, I'm, I've got a bipolar emotional feeling about it. I'm very proud of her for writing a book because it's very important to vent. And we did have a different life prior to my brother. I'm mad that it's affecting my family besides us, because it really should have been more about us. And I did put some input on there, but it was supposed to be fictional. It is fiction. That's what I'm trying to figure out, because you, you said that it was fiction, and you had that disclaimer in there, but then you said, actually, it's just our, it's our story. It's based on us, yes. There are, there are some serious allegations that are in dispute, and so clear these up quickly. Jory, you, you said there was a point where you were at a government office and uh, uh, at age five and a man offered you a quarter. I remember him fondling me, and that's all I remember. Well, that's not what you said in the book. Yeah, I know. Was this one of the things that was factual, or was this one of the things that was... It was just exaggerated. This was exaggerated? Yes. And Dottie, your reaction to that was, that's false. You were not there, but you, you think you certainly would have heard about that. And Grant, you, you weren't there, and you just said, I, you just you didn't believe that. Yet. I wasn't born yet, but I don't buy it. 
and then you said mother molested a boy that she babysat, and um, Dottie, you said true. You were informed by a woman at your mom's funeral who knew the victim uh, that uh, allegedly had confided in. Yeah, and I was not there, but I, I will be honest with you. But well, you I talked to someone at yes, a funeral. that said that they were told and, that, but I was not there. Uh, well, actually, here's the victim statement. I was not a, molested by Jory's mom. I do not recall witnessing or being part of any of the events mentioned in Jory's book. Her mother was not the gentlest person with me, but I can say with confidence that she never physically or sexually molested me. I Age was seven, mom that. wouldn't let Jory have toys, only Dottie. You say false, and neither one of us got any <laughs> toys. Got... <laughs> no, we didn't get anything. I agree with that. Uh, mother forced her to eat cat food. Did your mother force you <laughs> to eat cat food? And Dottie says false. Mother never did this. I made Jory canned cat food sandwich for bringing <laughs> friends in house and smoking pot. I was there for that. That's true. I remember. So, Dottie, you're the one that I did her... it. I'm guilty. I made cat Dottie food sandwiches. Him. I did. Grant food. was there. He was little. So you fed her cat food sandwiches. I did. And I'm sorry. I love you, but I gave you... I, you ate cat food. Food. Cat food. Okay. Mother... <laughs> Mother mixed dead cat meat with rice and fed father. You said false. Stepdad cooked 90%. That's true. My dad cooked all the and time. And wouldn't Amazing do show. that. And you said false. I did say that, yes. I, did. okay. I didn't eat it. Yeah, I didn't see it. Okay. Dottie had been raped and tortured, and mother did not listen to Dottie. And, and you said, no, that's false. That sex was consensual. Yeah, that was actually age 15. This is Sorry. her age, when she was 13. That is correct. Okay. Mother forced Dottie to get breast implants at age, when she was 14, that you had to get breast implants. No, I worked for a, a, an actress, and I either fit in her clothes and got boobies, so I, I went and got my boobies. And I couldn't remember if it was a nose job or breast implants at that age. Of course. And I was 20, 22 when I got my boobs. Well, you, you presented this as factual. You're, you're saying, no, they didn't happen until you were 22. Correct. Correct. So that's wrong. That is wrong. Okay. And that Jory got pregnant by a man who died and had a son, and you said that's false because she didn't know well, who the father was. We weren't sure at that, ta at that time who it was. So this is just all over the place. So you're not sure of some of the facts, right? Yes, that's true. Which is why I was saying I was a little confused about whether the book was fiction or fact or whatever. You don't believe that your mother, in fact, took her own life? I don't buy it. My mother's body wasn't even cold yet. And Jory was rifling through her room, taking the belongings out of there. I saw her with my own eyes You're going disgusting. through her stuff. That is the most disgusting I'm calling right thing. Now, excuse me. Jory claims that my mother committed suicide which is completely ridiculous. Jory said that she found a note under my mom's pillow, and the note was a suicide note. The letter was written by my mother to my sister Dottie and I. The letter basically said my mom did not want to live anymore, and that because my sister and I were just such failures in life that she feels worthless and life isn't worth living off and by. It was really nasty. My sister and I didn't want to tell Grant about the letter. We wanted him to believe our mother had a heart attack and that she did not commit suicide. I ripped it in a million pieces, ran into the toilet and flushed it, and I said, this never happened. I just couldn't deal with it. I completely went numb. I spoke with my stepdad and my brother, and my stepdad clearly stated that there was no note under my mom's pillow or on her bed or anywhere that was visible in her room. My big question is, did my sister find the note underneath my mom's pillow, or did she already have it? Did my mom write it like an hour before she died? Did she write it 10 years ago and my sister just so happened to find it? I'm not sure now. My mom had some fairly distinct handwriting, and I believe that she did write the note. What I don't believe is that Jory found it under the pillow or that it was a note that was written anytime in recent times. I honestly believe that Jory created that suicide scenario as the perfect ending to her tale that she had been telling. You don't believe that your mother, in fact, took her own life? No. But the two of you, did, did you find her together? No. Did I, you find? Did you both read the suicide note? Yes, I I read the I read it. She read it prior to me, if I'm correct, and then I read it. Sorry. 
Was it? It was really awful. Was it in your mother's handwriting? It was. Uh, and there's no question about that. There's not. My sister handed it to me, and I read it, <laughs> and I was so devastated by it. If my mother wanted to commit suicide, she did so at a really odd time because my son was due to be born any day at that time, and I had spoken to my mother the day before she passed away, and she could not wait to meet my son. She was in really good spirits, and um, you know, my dad told me the story of how things went down when she passed away. She was in the shower, and my dad was outside doing some yard work, and he heard she had a bell when she was in trouble because of her health. A cowbell. It was like a cowbell that she would ring if something was wrong. And my dad heard that bell ringing. He ran into her room. She was still wet from the shower, laying on the bed. He with helped a robot, the yeah. with a robe on. He helped the paramedics load her into the ambulance. In doing that, all the bedding was generally removed. Uh, when I got there, my mother's body wasn't even cold yet, and Jory was rifling through her room, taking the belongings out of there. <gasps> And I said, what are you They're doing? You're disturbing. I said, what are you doing? And she said, dad doesn't need to see these things around the house right now. You're sick. And I know, I saw her with my own eyes You're going disgusting. through her stuff. That is the most disgusting, I'm appalling right thing now, I ever me. heard and, in my life. And as she's going through all the stuff, <laughs> then she's saying that now she's saying that she found a note under the pillow. My yeah. dad confirmed that absolutely did not happen. You know, when, when I first heard about this note, I, I didn't know what to think. And I, I was upset. I thought, oh my gosh, my mom committed suicide. But after looking at all the facts, I don't buy it. If that's your truth and you know that, then that's it. And if... I don't know, though. That's a problem. <clears throat> like, I don't know. Like, I would like to think my mom would not do that to herself. I am the last person to speak with her an hour before she died. I, I feel so responsible on a level that's unhealthy. And I felt so guilty even telling my brother. And then I felt relief. And then I felt sick that I told him about it. After I swore, and we had a sister type, we want to talk. I broke that bond. And we're here because now everything hit the fan after I told my brother about the note. I'm not blaming him. I went off the deep end. I'm still not normal. I have, I've got problems. How is that on you? That's your mother's choice. If your mother did that, that's her choice. I don't want to think my mom died thinking what she thought of my sister and I and left the earth that way. Because I really, I thought I was a really good daughter to her. I tried so hard to be but the most. Whatever, whether the note was there or she not. She wrote it. That's a problem. She whether, wrote it. Well, I, we have already agreed that your mother struggled with mental you're illness. Right, you're right. There's nothing you could say to cause it. There's nothing you could say to stop okay. it. Okay. Even though I talked to her like five times, like an hour before she passed. Yeah. Even as much as you talk. Okay. <laughs> I know. Can I have a diet coke, please? <laughs> yeah. No. There's. It's nervousness. Even if you talked to her five now. minutes before, five hours before, or didn't talk to her for five years before. Okay. Those are Thank her you. choices. Thank you. All right. We'll be right back. My mom forced me to be a model or an actress, and I always wanted to please her. Since my mom died, my life went to having this amazing high self-esteem and respect for myself to completely feeling like a worthless piece of cow dung. I feel like my sister opened a box with all these demons that came out, and I really don't know how to fix it. My sister Dottie was actually very supportive while I was writing the book. After the book was published, my sister said that the book was frickin' awesome and she loved it. Then my sister did a flip-flop and started to recant her statements of how wonderful the book was. Now that my sister's gone public with this book, it's really caused our entire family to be in disarray. I feel like people don't even look at me the same, like I'm a freak or something for going through what I did. I'm here with Jory, author of a self-published book, uh, a novel that details what she claims are stories based on an unspeakable, abusive childhood, Jory says, really happened to her when she was growing up. Grant, on the other hand, says he thinks it's a book of lies. She thinks it was a self-aggrandizing sort of thing, questions the motives, questions the truth of it all. When, when we started talking to you, you initially said to our AP Miles on two... 315, I didn't get Grant fired. He has two children I love that he has had to support, and I didn't want them to be adversely affected. But yet, you sent Grant a text on 12 10 14 that says, How's your job? Oh, yeah, you got fired. That's too bad. Maybe you could get food stamps. 
You're telling us, oh, I didn't get him fired. I, I... I didn't get him fired. He got himself fired, Dr. <laughs> Phil. You don't go into people's accounts and pull their credit reports. Well, you're saying you're I, I, would ha I wouldn't do anything. The DA he has, has two a pending investigation. children I love. You're out of your mind. That you're is out of your absolutely mind. false. There's no opening. And they fought like this since since they since my little baby brother was born and he was able to say hi. They have fought like this. This is so normal, but it's not normal. And I, and I have a whole, not normal. I have no, a whole I list of. Oh, no, I agree with you. I agree with you. What I'm saying is, you guys always talk like this to each other. I have a whole list other. of you these I, I could go through, which I don't need to. But at one point, you you said things, and then then you took took things back or changed the next day. And so I'm wondering if if these memories and perceptions are. A, a moving reality for you because you're saying some of the stuff is coming back to you. Mm -hmm. Is it coming back to you in bits and pieces? Yes. I think that my mom's death really affected Dory because she got in an argument. She didn't have closure. There was something weird there that I can't understand or fathom, but I know for a fact because you did tell me and my, my mother, the last conversation that Dory told her, go freaking die, I hate you. But that, they, they had that relationship it was very unhealthy. It was very unhealthy. And the day she died, my stepfather had called me at my office, and I went down to his house, and he asked me to go in her room and remove all the sheets. Yes, they were a mess. They were everywhere. I never said that the letter was a suicide letter at that time, and I never said it was under the pillow. It was on the side of the bed with a big binder, so I'm surprised my stepfather didn't see it because it had letters to all of us. That same exact day, I gave that to my stepfather, and I saw the letter and it said to my daughters and it was an envelope. So I called my sister and read it to her. I, I, at the time, I didn't think it was a suicide letter. It wasn't addressed to Grant, it was just addressed to us two and I read it to her over the phone. You did tell me that no, it was under the pillow. You didn't say it was a suicide note. When I read it, it was like, holy moly, this is, how can someone say this? I'm not mad at you, I love you. I'm worried for her when she goes home that something's gonna happen to her. I have fear right now. I'm being, as the bigger sister, I have concern that my sister will do something to herself, and I'm very worried about that. I don't take that light. That's very, I'm here for a few reasons, mainly because I'm concerned. I, and that's on my God, on my boys' lives, I would never say that I'm Well, I have worried. a lot of opinions, uh, and I'm gonna tell you what they are when we come back. <laughs> I'm here with uh, Jory, Grant, and Dottie, and We've been talking about a lot of things, and I hope that the two of you find some common ground and some common support in there with each other, because you went through that together, yes. you survived it together, you're surviving as adults together. You wrote that book, and you said that it worked for you, and it, it saved your life. You, you had an absolute and unfettered right to write that book, no question. Um, you have an absolute and unfettered right to write another one, and another one after that. And you can't control what she does or she does or anybody else does, but the good news is the only person you need to control is you. That's the conclusion I've come to. So you, you go on with your life. I choose to just pretend Jory doesn't exist. She, she's dead to me. I, yeah. There's no one left to forgive. She's not even a distant memory. I've just erased her. That's, that's a fiction. She does exist. Not in my world. Yes, she does. And, and listen, it is becoming to you as a father, as a man, as an individual to say, I, I choose to forgive you and, and wish you well. It, and that's the thing, his children adore me. No, my children want and nothing I, to do with you really, anymore because of what you did to me. Guess okay. who spent all day with okay. me two days ago? Okay. Your children. Okay. Stop, stop, <laughs> stop, 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 stop. Now you know why I talk fast. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> no, we agreed you were going to be quiet. I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay. I, I'm My just, sign language. I'm just saying, you need to hear it, just guy to guy here. When you got bitterness and hatred in your heart, it changes who you are in every relationship you have. That's fine. You need to stay away from my kids regardless. I don't care. I'm just asking you to consider what I'm saying. Just consider it, okay? Sure. Fair enough? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay? Fair enough. Do your work. Do the things you gotta do. All right. Um, I've actually um, just written a book myself, something I'm really passionate about. Uh, it's helping people that... Um, fall victim to scams, and I want to shine a, shine a bright light on the fact that Americans spend $61 billion a year 
on weight loss products uh, that don't work. For the first time in 10 years, I have written about weight again. It's a book called The 2020 Diet that could help you finally reach your goal. I want you to stop buying into the insanity of these yo-yo diets that can actually damage your health and your heart. Uh, I'm not making you false promises here. I'm giving you a three-phase plan that works, 20 foods for 20 days that are actually going to change things for you. You can find it anywhere in bookstores. And I want to thank everybody in America uh, for making this number one on the New York Times bestseller list. Thank you so much for that. And everybody in the audience is going home with a copy today. So thank you very much. All right, you guys. Yes. Thank you so much. What? Thank you. You've made my life better. Thank you so much. Of course, for you too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. All right, guys, thank you so much. Thank you.